here's another week of my summer break. So since I'm on summer break, I've had the chance where I can do a lot of my own studying. Um, I've got a lot of books that I'm borrowing from a friend, some others that I bought, and then some that I got from the library. So this week I have devoured this one. It's called Composition, Understanding Line, Noten, and Color by Arthur Weasley Doe, and it's by the Dover publication. I've read it cover to cover, and there are exercises in the chapters, so you can be practicing design and composition that way. So I first just read the whole thing, and now I'm going back through and doing the exercises. And for line, notin, and color, notin, which I wasn't familiar with this word, I might not even be pronouncing it correctly, it's a Japanese word, that means light and dark, but not just light and dark, but it means light and dark harmoniously. So in the first chapter, it talks about line, note, and in color. The second chapter is line drawing, and it's talking about different ways that you can be studying this and be doing your own, well, doing the exercises and practicing it on your own by using different materials like charcoal, pencil, but then also explaining materials that I wasn't familiar with, like a reed pin, which I already ended up having one that I found in my art supplies, but <clears throat> I did look at Blick and you can get them for, at the Blick that I was at is little for as $5. And then also Japanese brushes, and I just got this set from someone, so I've been playing around with it a little bit. I haven't gotten to use them all yet but it's been fun and like I said they go over how to use the brushes and the repin a little bit in this book. The second chapter is the principles of composition ways of creating harmony and I did the exercises from that chapter and well this was what they were showing you with practicing how to use a repin and I didn't have the brushes yet so this was all done with a reed pen and some other stuff just sketches just for fun but this was with looking for harmony and composition and some of these are copied from the book and then some of them are my own designs so this has been fun i've always wanted to play around with ink before and so this is giving me a chance to do that and then all the other chapters are going into line note and, and color and they're just going into more detail of what those are. And so I'm finding this book helpful in my own studies with looking at paintings that I like and it's helping me to see the harmony and why I feel like the painting's working and I think that this is gonna help me with my own compositions in the future. But since I am just starting playing around with ink a little bit, if anyone has any tips or advice for me, if they could put that in the comments, I'd really appreciate that. I've used the the brush is just a tiny bit, but I've been mostly using this reed pin, and I don't know if you're supposed to wash it after you are done using it. I've just been wiping the ink off when I'm done. Um, this one, it's really fun to dip in the ink and then draw, and I find the sound that this makes on the paper really satisfying too while I'm working. And I had some different inks that I already had. I had Higgins Calligraphy. This one I'm finding pretty watery and I don't like it quite as much. And this one is Speedball Super Black India Ink, and I like this one quite a bit. It is super, super black. And using this on white paper, it is fun doing these designs on it, the actual act of doing it. It just, seeing that huge contrast that's coming out of it, um, it's exciting to do, but once it dries and I've that's kind of faded away. I look at these and I don't like so much that really high contrast of really black to really white of the paper. So I got, I went to the store and I bought Bombay Brown India ink. Um, this one's pretty watery too, which I wish it wasn't as watery as it was, but I'm just trying it out. But I do like how that looks a little bit better because you can get a little bit more, I don't know, it's just like a um, not as high of contrast so it's a little bit more pleasing like these three down here are with the brown though I did this one with the brush too and I kind of like that better because I just kind of glaze the background and so it's different um, by adding more water to the ink so it's uh, different values of brown which I like that better I just I guess I just don't like anything that looks 
too harsh. I just don't like that so much. Yesterday I went to Lincoln Park to go sketching and I sat myself down under a tree and there was a lady with her dog and she was playing fetch with her dog and the dog was, it was an open area, pretty open area, so she had one of those uh, plastic devices. I think it's called a chuck it. I think my parents have one for their dog. But so she could really throw the ball, the ball really far with that. So the dog had a huge area to run back and forth. And so I had my sketchbook out and I was drawing this dog in motion and studying it that way. And I found that really stimulating. Um, I guess when I normally sketch, I'll pick things that are not moving so much or I'll try and sketch someone on a train that's sitting down so they're they're not moving around too much but doing our running dog that was challenging and so in my sketchbook I took a lot of notes and drew different parts of the dog too like drawing the the back legs and seeing how the back legs were moved together almost like how a rabbit hops the back legs moving together and then the front legs would front legs would oppose each other um, and then I was seeing how the, the head lined up with the neck and how the neck flowed into the ribcage of the dog. And that was really fun. So I think I'm going to try and do that again and look out for things in motion that I can study and sketch that way. But then when the lady and the dog left, I was just looking out into the field and noticing the trees. So I started trying to sketch the trees with using what I had learned from this book that I talked about in my previous video Carlson's Guide to Landscape Painting by John F. Carlson and reading this book definitely helped me to simplify big masses of value in landscape but I was still struggling with drawing trees and um, I've heard about this book and I really wanted to get it so I went to the library and let's see this book the official title is the Artistic Anatomy of Trees, Their Structure and Treatment in Painting, and it's by Rex Vicott Cole. And this book so far, I'm really enjoying it. I've read the, well, the first chapter of it, it's just talking about, and it has a ton of examples of uh, trees in paintings, and it's talking about famous paintings and how people are handling trees but then in the second chapter it says what to look for in trees balance single trees trees in masses and groups and composition so I read this chapter I'm finding it really helpful like seeing how like these are um, some examples of how with talking about finding the balance in trees how trees how you, you should look for the balance of how the the trunk is balancing out the mass of the top part of the tree and it's comparing it when you're drawing the figure and you're trying to see how the balance is and usually for a figure I'll see draw a straight line down from the inner ear because that's how we balance ourselves from the inner ear and see how that matches up with the feet and doing the same thing with the trunk and seeing how the trunk is um, distributing its weight to hold up the whole mess of the top part of the tree and saying that even though there are obviously the roots that are huge and go way away from the big part of the tree that you're not seeing and that definitely helps with balance but it also should be evident too with how the trunk is holding up the top part of the tree as well so I'm going to go out after this video and go to the park and sketch some trees from this chapter and experiment around with what it's saying. And lastly, I was in Barnes and Nobles and I found this book, Leonardo's Notebooks, and I've seen that there's a, there's a couple different versions of people putting together Leonardo's notebooks, which are all of his scraps of writing and sketches. And from the few that I've seen, this has been my favorite one, so I ended up buying it. And I like this one because I think it's organized pretty well with putting his all of his random writing pieces together. But I also like that this book is filled with sketches. Ah, oh, that was my bookmark. <laughs> and um, where he does have writings that will match up to the, the text as well. And I was looking at another 
book like this and it didn't do the same thing so this one by far is my favorite that I found so far it's called Leonardo's notebooks writings and art of the great master edited by H Anna saw and all the books that I mentioned I'll put down in the description box below if anyone else wants to see if their library has them if you want to check them out so yes I've been doing a lot of reading over the summer which is good and the books that I've mentioned in the video are definitely the ones that are I'm finding really helpful and finally I have some more paintings available and you can go to my website and check them out if you want and it's the ones right here this one this one, this one, this one, and this one up here. <laughs> um, these are master copies that I did over last winter break. So there are Sargent's and Rembrandt's and Zorn, or oh, the Zorn one's not available anymore, but um, different Sargent's and Rembrandt's details that I've done. So if you want to check those out, I'll, you can either go to my website, jennifermariepainty.com, and then I'll also have a link for it in the description box below as well.